Welcome to Revealing God's Truth. My name is Jack. I'm an evangelist. Part of my ministry is this channel, and our goal is to help fellow Christians to grow in Christ and to live more Christ-like so that we can show Christ through our actions and not just through what we say. If you're not a Christian but would like to know more about what it means to be a Christian, I will put a card above that you can click on. It will take you to a video that will offer more explanation and hopefully answer at least some of your questions. God tells us to let our light shine, and we ask that you help us to do that by sharing this content with others. We hope that you get a blessing from the following, and we thank you for joining us as we seek to reveal God's truth in His Word. Welcome back to Revealing God's Truth. Uh, if you watch uh, my videos that, that I put out, you, you, you've heard me say that I watch a lot of uh, debates and, and, and whatnot uh, online between Christians and, and, and whatnot. Well, you know, as you're doing that, it, you, you know, inadvertently come across other other things and other individuals that that also put out content uh, from the uh, Christian perspective, and one uh, individual is Mike Winger. Now I'm I'm not going to go into a whole thing about Mike Winger. I, I, I I'm not exhaustive in my knowledge uh, about him. I I, I do know that uh, there 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 seems to be several points where he he could really uh, get more in line with God's word and, and then there's other points where he's like wow that's I like how he said that I like how he kind of did this or whatever so this is not a bashing of, of mr. winger but the other day I came across this this video on his YouTube channel the title of the video is How I Currently Understand the Bible Saying, Quote, Women Be Silent in the Church, end quote. Now, this particular video, he has, uh, it's actually a, a split screen of, of him in the middle and two other uh, men on each side. And I guess this was taking... Um, uh, uh, they were looking at comments or questions uh, from somewhere else or, or whatever, and they were going to answer um, this question. So as I as I listened to it, it I, it just it really struck a nerve and. Uh, not in a, you know, I went off the deep end angry or whatever, but it did s spur me into deciding to make a, uh, a video commenting on this video. Now, because I, I'm, you know, somewhat new to the whole YouTube whatever, uh, I'm not going to get into the... Uh, legalities of putting the video up here and letting it play and then commenting as it goes i don't i don't know if that would be okay uh i, I wished it would it would make this easier but um I, I i don't know so what i would invite you to to do uh would be to uh watch watch this video again the the uh the name of the channel is mike winger and the title of the video is How I Currently Understand the Bible Saying Women Be Silent in the Church. And I'm I'm going to play this to myself. I know this is going to be a little little odd, uh, but I'll try to try to relay what's being said and then comment. Now the the verse of scripture that's being uh, looked at here is First uh, Corinthians fourteen uh, verses thirty four and thirty five, 
and of course this is the uh, this is dealing with uh, women and uh, whether or not they they can what 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 their interpretation which is incorrect it should be what is their understanding because it, it says what it says it's not, it's not interpreted it's not it because you could get an interpretation I it's it's understood to be this so the person asks what is uh their interpretation so again this is uh first corinthians 14 34 and 35 So this person, when they ask the question, one of the things that they are pointing out here is uh, a claim that that verses 34 and 35 are added to God's Word. So again, you know, the, this person is confused about the inerrancy of God's Word. So... Now, first of all, as Mr. Winger uh, starts to reply, he pulls up a a, a um, counterfeit Bible. Now, why do I say counterfeit? Now, I'm not mean. I'm not trying to be uh, pointed or nasty or anything like that. But it it, it it's it's very the the whole thing about anti King James Bible and uh, the acceptance of all these other um, Bibles and all the, if you if you truly want to know the truth it's very easy to see it's very easy to see that the King James Bible is the Bible in the English language for us today it is there are differences that set it apart. From every other uh, so-called version of the Bible that's been put out, we have a video on this channel about it. If you'd like to look at it, um, but the 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 thing is, is that you have to really uh, twist and and turn things in order to. Uh, get to a point to where you say that there are better interpretations or better uh, versions of God's Word than the King James Bible. No, what it is is those versions say things in a way that you that fits what you like, which is one of the problems with this uh, video that you'll see as as we uh, as we move along. But he does uh, address whether or not. He believes that the verses were added or not, and <clears throat> excuse me. So he says that he believes that they were not added; that they were meant to be there and 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 whatnot. But but here here's the problem. First off, you're using the wrong Bible. You're using something that is not God's word, and and that automatically you're you're starting out from a bad spot because here is a person that has asked you a question, and they're saying, "Oh, there's so, I've heard so many interpretations and and this and that and the other," and then all of a sudden you're going to come out with, "Well, here let me let me speak to you from something that's not even God's word." And, and and there there's a there's the first problem, and and, you, and we see as we go along that there's other instances where when you the, the you never want to bring uh, doubt on God's word because you either believe that the Bible is God's word or you don't, and you can't believe because the the differences in the King James Bible and, and all the other versions are so different because they're so different from each other. There's no way to say, well, they're all God's Word. So, God didn't make this thing 
complicated. He give us one one Bible for us to use, and 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 it, it's it's very easy to use as long as you actually want to put forth any effort to to serve God and 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 be what you're claiming to be. So that that's that's one issue right there through this whole thing that 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 there's a problem. So then he 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 goes into well you got to be kind of careful because of the the atmosphere today and you know it's basically you don't want to offend people well one thing i, I want to point out right there is jesus himself pointed out that he didn't come into the world to bring peace and that his his uh the the salvation being offered and and would and the message that he brought was going to turn brother against brother and families against family members and and it, it so offending you know we should not seek to offend people it should that should not be our intent if that is your intent to offend someone then you're in the wrong but if you are putting forth truth from God's word and someone is offended then you are right and they are wrong and that's just the way it is you don't not tell the truth of God's word for fear of offending someone so he he points out how there is a motivation. He could see how there would be a motivation to call doubt on whether those two verses should be there or not. And of course, that is with the politically correct um, atmosphere of, of today. But and see, then he, then he talks about you know, it's pretty consistent with the translations of God's Word. No, no, see, there again. You got... <laughs> you've either got God's Word or you don't. They're so different that there's no way they can all be God's Word. And and I say that because I know which one is God's Word because of, of study and, and and research and not trying to 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 put my own spin into things you know one, one thing that i don't get is what do you gain by bringing doubt on god's word meaning the king james bible what do you gain other than you muddy the waters of what uh god's truth is and and, and what the bible truly says that's the only thing I can I can see that there's a gain from that. Uh, so the gain from being against the other versions is exactly because it muddies the water of what God's word says. It it says things that's not true. It says things that that are that are unbiblical, and it takes things out and it adds to and it moves things around. And, and so uh, the, so. The gain from being against other versions is that you go back to the tried and true King James Bible, God's Word. That is the gain there. But the gain from uh, the promotion or the acceptance of multiple versions being God's Word, I don't understand what the gain is there because it brings more confusion than it does clarity, and we'll actually hit on that uh, a little bit further along. So he points out about the, you have to be so careful about what you say when it comes to uh, women in the church because people are so triggered today. And he's right, that is that is true. People are triggered, uh, 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 and, and in, instead of uh, using their brains to actually you know, think about things and think things through and, and inform themselves. They just immediately from the hip, they're triggered, they're mad. And, and you know, it's so it's so funny. 
you you watch some of the political stuff and you see where you know uh, this person is triggered and boy they're just you know they're like a, a dog on a leash you know just yap, 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 yap. And, and and then the guy makes a point and they get it and they you can see their you see it clicks in their brain but then they then they they have a bad spot do you admit that you were wrong and then back down or do you stick to your guns and keep yep 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 and and from the even though you even though you you got everybody saw it on your face that oh i i was wrong or you know are you going to keep on with it nine times out of ten they keep on with it but the 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 he, he is right about the fact that you know we live in a, a triggered uh society right now but then he goes on to point out that how paul on the other hand is not that way at all paul is very straightforward and he's right and now i'll get to that in a second but i i i want to point out something he didn't point out if you look at uh second corinthians let's see let me go down here you go to second corinthians and go to chapter 10 and go down to verse 10 so this is paul and he's right into the church at corinth and he is he's saying that this is what is said about him so he's saying in his letter this is what you say about me or this is what is said about me verse 10 it says for his letters say they talking about paul for his letters say they are weighty and powerful but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible so in other words they loved the they loved his letters and and all because they there were they they seemed powerful and 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 all but said when he was there he said he, they didn't really like the way he looked he he didn't he didn't have a he didn't have a strong presence i guess that that uh that they thought he should have and uh his speech the way he spoke you know it was contemptible they it, it just it didn't hit right they didn't they didn't they didn't like the way he he talked he was very straightforward and plain and 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 just fired you know down the line uh you know not sparing your feelings and so look at that and you see okay so they liked his letters because basically what they could do with his letters is read their own inflection into it and say oh well see this is what paul meant here and blah, blah, blah. but but then when he's standing in your face and he's and he's up there preaching and he's pointing that three foot long finger at you and telling you exactly how it is oh then all of a sudden uh it, it's uh, we don't like paul as much then we like his letters when he stays away then we can uh, do whatever we want and and kind of misinterpret or whatever we want but but then when he's here and he, he kind of cuts all the fat away and 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 all the facade is now revealed uh we don't like that don't like that so paul was very, he was, he's right paul was very straightforward but then uh he, he starts speaking about how uh you know that that paul says that um if you look at verse 34 uh, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded. Now, see, this is not what he. This is not what he read. He, his his so-called Bible uh, says, um, "For they are not permitted to speak, but are subject to themselves, just as the law says." Okay, but God's word says. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Now he's pointing out how uh, that they are commanded to be under 
obedience. Now, what, what does this mean? Is this, does that mean from God's word, does that mean imposed obedience? Does that mean that, uh, that through some form or fashion that obedience is being, they're being forced into being obedient? No, that is exact. that's not what it's saying. And that's not what he's saying either. What it means is, and it means this for everyone, that your subjection, whether it be to God, whether it be to as from the woman to her husband, whether it be to anyone to Christ, uh, whether it be children to their parents, that subjection is up to them. They have to choose to subject themselves. It cannot be forced. I mean, it, it you can try to force it, and then it's not really subjection, and the person trying to force is in the wrong uh, anyway. And I don't know why he's he's over pointing this out. I, it's, it 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 doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, then he, he says we're going to put this in context. He says that Paul is, Paul is actually, even though Paul just said, now let's read these two verses. We're gonna we're gonna let's read verses thirty four and thirty five, and then and then we'll continue. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted under them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let if they and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman for women to speak in the church. All right. Now, he says that Paul is actually okay with women speaking in the church, even though this very plainly... Now, remember, now, this is something I, I, we we got to understand this. There's a fellow named James White. He's a Calvinist, and he does a lot of these debates and such. And and when he does these de debates, and he'll debate about the King James Bible not being the not being God's word and all this, and he goes into these absolute insane uh, ways of explaining how God's word is not God's word, and he'll say stuff like, "Well, the culture back then, and this and that, and such and such." And I'm like, "Wait a minute, guy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute." I hear what you're saying, but here's the problem with what you're saying. The layman, the everyday man, can't do that. So what you're doing is you're taking something. See, God means God's word to be for everybody, right? Everybody. And that's why it's so plain, just like verse 34 and 35 is very plain. Uh, there's some stuff that takes a little more study, and you compare scripture with scripture, and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. But uh, in this case, in this case here, it's very plain. Uh, but this this uh, th this gentleman will, will will he basically makes it impossible for the lay person, for the everyday Christian, to know what God's word says. Impossible. If you watch his 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 debates, you, you I think his name is James White. If you if you and I, I I advise not to watch too much. But if you if you watch some of his stuff, you see that that he's just he makes it almost literally impossible for the average person to understand what God's word says. Because if you can't go to this and you don't, if you're not a historian, if you don't know how to speak and write Greek, if you don't know how to speak and write Hebrew, then you can't. You don't know what it says in, but he'll tell you what it says. Right. So Mr. Winger here is saying that even though Paul just said that women should not speak in the church, that actually Paul's okay with it. 
So what he does is he says, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 5. Pause it right there. Okay. All right, here we go. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head for that is even for for that is even all one as if she were shaven so he says that see it says but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth now this is ta this is talking about church the way that the church is to conduct itself so he's right as in it, it is referred to church but he is he is using an improper definition of prophesying now we compare scripture with scripture if scripture says one if now we know that our foundation for today in the in the dispensation of grace we know that our foundation of doctrine is contained within Romans to Philemon. That is our uh, our go to when we when we read something somewhere else in God's Word, and it says do this or don't do this. What we have to do is go back to Romans through Philemon and say, okay, what does it say about that? And if it agrees with it, then guess what? You're doing you're doing what you're supposed to anyway. But if it's something that's not can if it's something contrary to Romans through Philemon, then guess what? That is not something for the church today. That's it, it, it's very, very plain, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if if Paul says in verse 34 and 35, that women are to stay silent in the churches. But yet up here says, but every every woman that prayeth or prophesieth, then apparently we're misunderstanding something. Now he's saying prophesying, that prophecy in this case is the the gift of prophecy, which is, at the time, they did not have the completed uh, canon of Scripture. So basically what it was, was knowing God's Word without having the completed Bible in front of them. That's basically what the gift was. That was the gift of prophecy. It was not the gift of prophecy as we would know it today as far as, like, well, it's a like fortune teller. No, it's the gift of knowing God's word without having it. Okay, so that was a, a spiritual uh, gift there. But in this case, what does this mean? When you, when you are giving forth scripture in the church, now listen, when you're giving forth scripture in the church, you are in a position of authority. Giving out God's word is a position of authority. So, since we know that, and we know that a woman is not supposed to have authority over a man in the church, then we know that her Prophecy here, for one, would not be to men. Okay? And two, it would not be out loud. But three, what does this mean? What does this prophecy mean? If you look up what the definitions of prophecy mean, you have... You, you have the three three uh, definitions. You have fortune telling, future telling. You have knowing God's word without having God's word in front of you. Uh, or, or 
well, before we had God's Word completed. And three, three, the definition is to break forth under sudden impulse in lofty discourse or praise. So in other words, praying or prophesying taken in context is praising God. This is not teaching and having authority and giving out in, in under the gift of prophecy. This is not giving out God's word because it would be giving out God's word and having authority over men. So, no. No, it does not mean that women were teaching and that Paul was okay with it. So then he goes on to point out uh, in Acts, let, uh, we'll go over to Acts. Let's go to Acts uh, 21. Verse eight. Okay, now now he misspoke here, and and this this uh, you know I, I'm not holding this against him. It's just a, he just misspoke. Uh, and, and the next and the next day, uh, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. Now, Mr. Winger just just stated that that Philip had seven daughters. Well, no, one of the seven, meaning one of the seven deacons of that church. And the same man, Philip, had four daughters, virgins, which did prophecy. Okay. Okay. Now, here's a thought. In 1 Corinthians 14, verses 34 and 35, this is referring inside the church, how the church should conduct itself. Uh, this, in, in Acts 21, uh, 8 and 9, it says nothing about being in church uh, right here, but that, that's, that's not really the, the point. We do not get our doctrine from the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a transitional book. It is a it is a moving from the old uh, covenant into the uh, dispensation of grace, and it's showing of, of what uh, you know the, how things were, uh, what transpired to get us there. Okay, you do not take doctrine. From the book of Acts. So if you look at the book of Romans and you look at verses 34 and 35 and it says women is supposed to be silent in the church and then all of a sudden you try to say well back in Acts it said they did prophesy. And? In the Old Testament Deborah was a judge. Is that the way it was supposed to be? No, it wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Here we have a situation where it says, and they did prophesy. Okay. Well, since that means that, since since we know that women are supposed to be silent in the church, could that have been the prophesying of knowing God's word without having the full canon of scripture as we know it today? No. Because we know in the book of Romans that the women are to be silent in the church. So with our foundation, we know that the definition here must be this definition of praise. Sudden praise. Testimony. That's what the, this, this prophesy here. Now, if you you could take this further, and we're not going to, but you could take it further. But I can I can tell you this: 
God did not have, or, or Jesus did not have a woman apostle. They wasn't a woman apostle. Okay. Now, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get a little further into this and, 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 and what they, because they kind of hit on it here near, near the end of it. But, you know, can, can a man, can, can a woman be a, a preacher? No. Can a woman uh, be a pastor? No. Can a woman be a deacon? No. There is a reason for this, and it's not because God or Christian Christianity or whatever is anti-woman. That's got nothing to do with it. Nothing. It's because there is a divine order and there is an actual reason that it's set up the way that it's set up. And we'll, we'll get, even though they don't, we'll get to that uh, uh, as, as we go on. Okay, so then, he, then he's talking about how this, this prophecy is a special kind of speech. Yes, as special as in it was one of the sign gifts. Now, then he talks about how when it says the word silent, all right? So let's go back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, wow, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35. Now, let your women keep silence in the churches. Now, he says here that the word silence Silent does it does not mean silent like it plainly says here. He says that it means to be silent when it comes to a certain type of speech, and that the uh, when you look at the word. So again, he's bringing doubt on God's word. He's saying that that that. Where it says silent, it don't really mean silent. Even though it's very plain that it means silent. So, you know, this, this, and he's, you know, he, 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 he talk, because he's not King James Bible, he, he, he talks about all the different translations and how they're translated better or whatnot. And it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to, to think that way. And, and 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 say, well, I don't have I don't have God's word. You know, I've got like fifteen hundred Bibles here and this is all God's word, even though it all says something different. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just pick out what I want it to say and the, the well, I like this translation. It 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 says homosexuality is okay. I'm not saying Mr. Wingers does that, but that that's what it can lead to. And there's the problem. It can lead to that kind of mess to the picking and choosing based upon the uh, so-called uh, trans, you know, version of, of God's word. So he says, he, see, he says that the original Greek says to refrain from using a particular kind of speech. That is not what it says. That's not what it says. If you if you look at Strong's Concordance, this is what it says. It gives two different definitions to the word silent in verse 34. To keep silence or to hold one peace, hold one's peace, or two, to be kept in silence, be concealed. Okay. It didn't say nothing about a certain kind of speech at all. So, we, first of all, you've got to get your Bible straight. You've got to you've got to to figure out. You know, hey, am I going to believe that God's word is preserved and that uh, the lay person can pick up a King James Bible and through the Holy Spirit and study get what God has to say, or are you going to think that there's fifteen hundred different uh, versions and that they're all God's word, even though they say something different. You you can't ride the fence. You got to figure out where you got to figure out one or the other. And if you're gonna if you're gonna be on the other, 
then you never are going to figure stuff out. Because what you're going to have is you're going to have somebody that comes to you and says, well, my my God's word says this. And well, my God's word says this. Well, my God's word. And you're going to have all these different interpretations instead of understanding what the plain word of God says in verse 34 and 35. Now, he says that the context of this, the, the, the context of what Paul is saying here, he's trying to say, goodness, is that it's speaking of when, when it says, verse 34 and 35, when it says that women be silent in the church, that women, when it comes to deciphering uh, what someone spoke in tongues or, or, or prophesied, you don't need to be the one deciding whether or not they, they were right or wrong. I don't know how you get that from, from this. I, I truly don't because I, I read it and I read it again and then I read it one more time just to be sure. That's not what the context is. The context is the correct, and I think he goes on and says it later, the correct use of the sign gifts of tongues, and I think he hits prophecy too in here, and it ain't got nothing to do the interpretation. Yes, of course it talks about the interpretation. But then he switches gears and says, hey, but remember, ladies, you need to be quiet. You're not to have a, you're not giving out. Scripture is a position of authority. The prophesying can be done, like in verse, I think it was verse four or five. Which one was it? Five. Can be done, but that is glorifying God. That is praising or giving a testimony. That is not exercising authority as in giving out the word of God. It's not the same thing. The context is that God is not the author of confusion. So, he goes on to, to talk about how this particular person said in their commentary, and that's kind of this da, 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 da. well the commentary is flawed because the commentary don't match up with what God's word says so th there's there's your problem but then he he kind of he kind of he kind of ends there and then the other gentleman I, I don't know I don't I wish I knew the other two gentlemen's name because I would give them credit for uh, being there, even though one doesn't really talk a whole lot on, on this particular video. But the one guy says, well, this is it's just a really complicated, uh, it's a really complicated issue because of the times, and I'm paraphrasing him. And I'm, and I just, when I heard that, I'm like, are you, are you kidding? Are you joking? It's difficult because of the times. What's difficult about it? You either choose to follow God's word or you choose to be against God's word. What is difficult about that? Now, if you're talking about it's difficult to be a Christian in general and put out God's truth in today's age, well, I think that's kind of been the case uh, ever since Christ died on the cross that we've been uh, persecuted and and looked down on and and, and the teachings of, of Christ and God and, and his word have have, have been uh, scoffed at and 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 uh, you know so why is it complicated? That's what I don't get. It's not complicated. You make a choice. You decide, hey, this is God's word. Either you're gonna either you're gonna stick with it, or you're not gonna stick with it. It's very simple. 
It's not complicated. So then it, he goes on to talk about how, uh, you know, well, you know, here's three guys up here talking about uh, stuff concerning women. Are you serious? Really? So you're so you're telling me that a man of God, a preacher, who can only be a man, cannot stand up and preach a sermon on anything to do with women because he's a man and he don't know where he's coming from as far as women are concerned. All that's doing is instead of renewing your mind into God's way of thinking, you're renewing your mind into the secular world's way of thinking. That, that is, that's, I mean, it sounds awful, but that is exactly what is going on. And, you know, to, to, to make that kind of statement, it doesn't matter when you make a statement like that. To me, it doesn't matter what the world thinks. It doesn't matter if it triggers the world. It doesn't matter if it, if it, if it you know, if people lose their minds when you, mm. when you uh, point out mm. uh, God's word, it, it, it it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that. Give me just a second. I I, I apologize. What matters is that you're showing that the situa that that you have a situational Christianity. It shows that what is going on in uh, the world at the time will have an impact on how you bring forth the gospel or uh, maybe even how you look at the gospel. That's a dangerous way of being dangerous way so th then the the then this this guy named uh you know robbie zacharias was was brought up now i almost made a video about this because this mr winger made another video concerning this guy and i watched it and i, I truly did i almost made a video about that because it, there was a lot of disturbing stuff there but the main the main the overall the overall is that here was a, a guy. Now I, I I I saw this guy's face on on many uh you know little you know as you scroll through YouTube you see people's you know whatever's on the cover. I saw his face a lot, but I never did click on any of his stuff. I I, I don't know why, but I just never did. So then it, this you know I saw this video about the guy, and the guy apparently he was some big time uh, evangelical. Uh, person and but yet he had all of he had a lot of uh uh sexual um junk going on behind the scenes and apparently it, it was you know very devastating to certain people and all and to a to a to a micro degree i can understand but Mainly after that little micro is 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 dealt with, then the the realization comes in is well wait a minute, it sounds an awful lot like you put this fella up on a big old pedestal, and that when he fell it really impacted you. And that's not right. That's that's idolatry. When we put other men, when you put any man of God and say oh. Well, he's this or that. No, you can res you can have respect for someone, but you know you still have to realize, hey, this individual is the same as you and me. He can fall just as fast as anybody else if he's not careful. Now, this individual, he was doing things in the background that clearly showed that this man was not a believer. He was a charlatan. 
So to try to say, well, you know, because of this, it put a black eye on the church. No. If the guy is not following the word of God, how does that, it, I don't care how it how it it looks to to whatever over there. The point is, and and even Mr. Wenger pointed this out later on that hey, they're gonna you know people will try to 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 take the the weak spot of Christianity and try to attack it. Well, that's exactly what they what you know is going on with that. So they you know trying to say well you know he's a womanizer and, and all this stuff. So then. At at one point he he asked, well, where he this guy asked Mr. Winger, where do you draw the line? Because if you uh if you follow God's word, you follow God's word, then it looks like that we're being sexist. That it's that it's putting women down. Now, Mr. Winger, to his credit, uh, asked the question, and he says, well, do you believe that the Bible puts women down? And the gentleman answered, well, no, I do not. Well, then the rest of the 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 rest of the video, uh, I pretty, uh, if, if I remember right, I pretty much agree with, with what uh, Mr. Winger uh, had to say for the remainder of the video. But... Here, here's the thing. So let's we're just going to lay it out. Does God and does God's word, does Christianity in general, does it look down on? Does it put women down in any way, form, or fashion? Short answer: No. Does it put men on a pedestal? Does it say that men are better than women? Does it say that men are, you know, on some whatever? Short answer, no. But wait, then why is it that women are to be subject to their husbands? And, and, and why is it that women can't be preachers? And why is it that, that women can't, uh, you know, be you know uh uh head in the church and 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 whatnot in the church have leadership roles okay so we're going to lay it out as easy as i know how back in the beginning you had adam and you had eve The Bible says that Eve was deceived. Adam made a choice to sin. Eve was deceived into sin. Sin entered into the world because of, according to the Bible, one man's Sin. Eve was deceived. Adam made a choice. So, how does what what how does that correlate with what we're talking about? It correlates this way. In God's design. God made woman to be a help meet. This is a this is a a uh, helper specifically designed to help her husband. All right, help meet. That is God's design. Now, does does that? Put her at some lowly position. No, it does not. The Bible says that a good wife is 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 basically priceless. 
That's true. So I don't see how that devalues a woman. Now, God has an order. All right? There's an order. So if a woman says, well, I don't like being subject to my husband. I don't like being subject. I want to be the head of something. There's no difference in that than a man saying, well, I don't want God to be the head of the church. I want to be the one that makes the rules. I want to be the one that, that, uh, that you know, is the end all of everything. That, that I don't want to, to answer. To, that's, it's, both are exactly the same, and both are exactly wrong. God has an order. You can't just let's just think about this just just logically for a moment. If you have to make a decision about something, if you have to make a very big decision about something, do you want to do you want a person who is very uh, wishy washy uh, to make the decision, or do you want this? informed and confident person to make the decision. Why would you want the informed, confident person to make the decision? Because that would allow for the best outcome. Yes? Okay. That is logic. All right. Well, when it comes to decisions, big decisions in the home, Is it better to make a decision based on emotion, which changes on the based on the situation and the circumstances, or is it better to make a decision using logic and and looking at the facts and the past and the present and the future and 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 all of the 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 pieces and make a decision based on the facts? instead of just your feelings. Well, in the secular world, meaning non-Christians, would say, well, feelings, especially especially today with the social justice warriors and all, they would say the feelings. you got to use your feelings to make decisions, and then they make awful decisions. You use logic to make decisions. Well, guess what? Women are designed to be more emotional. Men are designed by our Creator to be more logical. Why? Man was made first, according to God's Word. That's the way God made it. That's So, man was made first. He put him over everything. And then, here's his helpmate to help him. Alright? But, because he's logical, and she's emotional... Their opposites complement each other. And then when they have little people, guess what? The little people that they produce now get a dose of logic and a dose of emotion from both parents. So now this little person, whether it's a boy or a girl, grows up and is a well-balanced individual. When it comes to making a, a decision in the home, there has to be a final decision. Do you want your final decision made by the emotional or by the logical? See, God, he already knows this, so he just kind of cut through it all and just said, your husband is the head of the house. But since we need explanations for some reason, this is the explanation. This is why. Satan, in the Garden of Eden, he did not go to Adam because he knew Adam would be like, whoa, bub. God said this, and this is what we're going to go by. So you can just, you know, take a hike. He went to the one that he knew he could easily deceive. The one that is more easily deceived. Do you want a an individual that is more easily deceived by nature to be the head in the church? 
to have authority in the church. No. Does this put women down? No. Women have a specific role. They have a role to, uh, the older women are to teach uh, the younger women. They are to teach the, the children. They are to be the helpmeet. They are to be the Proverbs 31 wife in the home. They have all of this responsibility. If you'd like to look at our, our we have a, a series on uh, biblical marriage. It lays all this out. And it shows that we've got it wrong. How that, you know, uh, you know, we we've always been taught. Well, you know, the man is supposed to be. He, he's the he's the head, so he's like the he's the uh, the operations leader, the CEO. He's all he's everything, and the woman's just the worker down here. That's not true at all. Proverbs thirty one wife. She sold stuff. She bought land. She I mean, she done all kind of things. She's the operations leader. The husband is the CEO. That's the way it works. So she's not this. She's not this doormat, and she's not this lowly, you know, subservient, you know, wretch that's that's you know walking around to be trodden on and looked down upon. That's not. That's that's not the way God views women at all. That's that's crazy. To, to, you you have to you have to take things so out of context to get that. Now, if you are a if you're a lady, and you do not like the you know if you're a born again believer and, and you're a lady and you don't like the way that this is set up, then you need to repent, and you need to align yourself with God's word, because this is not God did not give you this position because it is a lowly position. For you to submit yourself is such an act of submission and servitude to your heavenly Father. It is astounding for you to put yourself in the position of, I'm going to help my husband. I'm going to be the best helpmeet. I'm going to be the Proverbs 31 wife. That is an awesome responsibility. Here on earth, as a matter of fact, the wife in a family in, in a family, the wife has more physical responsibility than the husband. Now the husband has more spiritual responsibility. So the women are not put down. They are put in in, in lofty positions. But here's the problem. The, the reason that people look at this and they say, well, women, uh, the, the Bible puts women down. No. The reason you see it that way is because you are being wicked. You are being rebellious. You don't want to submit yourself to God. And in submitting yourself to God, submit yourself to your husband and by being that Proverbs 31 wife who takes on that massive amount of responsibility. You're being rebellious. And of course, the secular world, they're already in rebellion. And then when they hear this, oh boy, it, yes, it like Mr. Winger was, was pointing out, it definitely, it triggers people. But we cannot, we can not adjust how or what we bring across. We should bring across the truth in God's word unadulterated, plain, and just like Mr. Winger pointed out that Paul did, straight forward and down the line. Not holding back and not adjusting because of the times or whatever. No. That's not how we do things. That's how we become what the church has become, which is weak and ineffective. So, are women to keep silent in the churches? The short answer, yes. It is very plain in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35, that yes, when it comes to 
authority, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to giving out of God's word, they are to be silent. When it comes to questions, if the pastor gets up and he preaches about something and the and you as a lady uh, are, are sitting there and and you, you don't understand, write it down. Write your little note down. And then you either ask your uh, preacher afterwards. If, you, if you're a single lady, you ask your preacher afterwards or you ask your your dad or you ask another uh, man of God that you are, are, are confident in. Uh, and if you're a married lady, you ask your husband at home just like the verse tells you to. That is being obedient to God. Which is kind of the point of being a believer, is being obedient to God. That's what this is all about. When we start getting away from God's word and, and, and bringing doubt on the, on, on, on the King James Bible, when we... When we start, uh, you know, mincing words and, 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 and saying, well, this commentator said this and this, and this. When we start doing all that mess, all we do is muddy the water. We need to be confident about, well, first we need to study, and then we need to be confident about what we're saying. And stop half, you know, half button it. Now, I know that Mr. Winger uh, stated that uh, he's going to be doing a more in-depth study, and he said he's open to uh, you know, changing his, his uh, uh, current view, which I, 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 I hope and pray that he changes it in a more uh, uh, in-line-with-God's-word way instead of a more uh, uh, liberal uh, uh, way of looking at it. Uh, but like I said, I, 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 this is not a bashing, uh, I, I don't mean for this to be a bashing video, but uh, I, 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 I do feel that a response was, was, was needed to uh, uh, Mr. Winger's and, uh, and, and the other two gentlemen's um, video that they pointed out this is the first one of these i've done i don't know if i'll ever do another one again it just you know it just hit me just the right way and the holy spirit kind of caught me up in it and i just started going um i the notes i made i made in about 15 minutes before i started doing this video uh i mean i would be i would be happy to have a rapport with 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 mr winger this the way he does with with other gentlemen uh and and discuss these things but I can I can say, uh, you know, if, if that if that were to be the case, then that's that's great, and I'm okay with that. But I can I can say ahead of time that I'm not uh, I don't have a noodle for a backbone, um, and you know I, I I take a stand even when it's not popular. And I think that, you know, especially when it's not popular, we should take a stand. That that should be our key indicator of taking a stand is, hey, this is, you know, it's not popular. Well, okay, well, that's what, you know, doing, uh, you know, following God's word is. It's not popular. So, like I say, this was not bashing. This was just a response to that because there was just so much about what was said that just veered away from God's word that I just felt that uh, I really needed to give a uh, response. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna once this once I finish the the editing part of this, I uh, will post it in the comments. And you know, if if Mr. Wenger would like to respond uh, to me personally. Uh, the, the best way to do so is to go to revealinggodstruth.com and, and contact me through uh, that uh, my website and and we can correspond uh, that way or we can you know work something out or whatever but uh, I, I do hope that he, you know that this is seen and and is given you know some consideration but 
I, you know, nothing against Mr. Winger. I've, I've seen, I've seen good and I've seen, you know, some, some not so good from, uh, from his videos. And I don't want to, uh, you know, come out of the shoot, um, you know, seeming like I'm just, you know, pointing fingers and, 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 uh, trying to, to to look down on anybody that's 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 not the point the the point is is that as as men of god with with platforms we need to make sure that we're taking a stand and that stand needs to be firm and it needs to be uh you know in a lot of cases it needs to be pointed and that's that's why i felt that this because there was a lot of iffiness in in the video so that's that's why I felt the need to respond. So we'll leave it at that.